consistent. What areas are you wanting to t try and play better? Um, myself, I just think we have to be more consistent on first, second down. You know, I think uh, putting ourselves in third and manageable, then and then converting when we have those opportunities to stay on the field. So uh, it's really, you know, every down that I want to be better on. You know, uh, you know, hitting the shots when we have have an opportunity, and uh, you know, being consistent, staying ahead of the chains early in the downs. Rhythm improving maybe as well in chemistry now that you had two starts under your belt as well with practice. You know, the more time you spend with the guys, the, the better it's going to get. You know, um, we're all working ex extremely hard to uh, improve that, talking through things. And, and the more looks we see, the more we talk through things, the better that's going to get. The way things have gone this year, you feel as good and as fresh in week nine as you've ever felt in your career? <laughs> yeah, probably so. You know, not too many times you only play a couple games before week nine, for me anyway. So, um, yeah, I feel good, feel fresh, and, uh, you know, ready to, uh, ready to attack this week. You think that can give you sort of an advantage? going forward these next couple weeks and that you're not treating a bunch of nicks and bumps and bruises? Yeah, I'd hope so. You know, I don't really think about it like that, but I just, you know, want to attack every week with energy and passion and, and bring that to the, the guys in the offense. Hopefully they feed off of it and um, and we can be contagious with that and, and just grow as a unit. What stands out, um, excuse me, most about Luke Keekly here? He's a good all-around player, man. He, uh, he's smart. I think that's one thing that you know uh, first and foremost. Obviously, he has all the athletic skills that he has, but uh, he's such a smart football player. He's going to diagnose things. Uh, I've played against him before. He's calling out things before uh, before they happen. So we're going to have to do a, a really good job of, of being clean in our details uh, in order to not give away those things, because otherwise he will he will uh, know what's coming. We've seen sizable jumps in third down conversion <clears throat> as well as red zone touchdown scoring since you've taken over as a starter. What really ha has been different? Like what? What's your explanation for that? I think the guys are executing. You know, we've had some opportunities. I'd like to have a few more down in the red zone. I think that's that's one area where we can, you know, just get down there more. We're, we're executing. We're, we're getting touchdowns and we're down there. But we need to get down there a few more times per game. So uh, really proud of the guys, the way they just keep battling. You know, a few times we went to third down and, and we're finally able to convert, get in the end zone on third down. So uh, just that belief that, hey, we're going to get in the end zone, maybe on first down, maybe on second, maybe on third. But we get down there, we believe we're going to get in the end zone. Guys was complimentary of you for some of the checks when they had zero blitzes. You, you checked and you balanced it out, so you had guys there. Is, is that just a result of your confidence, your, your comfort level? What's what's behind that? That's preparation. You know, I think the coaches do a good job throughout the week of of preparing us and and showing us the looks, talking through the looks on tape, and, uh, and then it's just a matter of seeing it and, and making it happen when you see it in the game. You find guys a little bit more focused when you, once you guys get inside the twenty in the huddle. I, I don't know. There, there's good focus throughout the throughout the game, so I don't think it's it's lack of focus um, that's it's hindering us, you know. So um, I think the, the guys are excited when we get down there. There's a little more, little bit of juice, uh, just knowing, hey, we're down here. This is a big opportunity. These are big downs, and uh, and we need to get in the end zone. So um, I wouldn't say, you know, it's uh, the focus narrows or anything like that, but uh, the intensity of <clears throat> knowing what's going on, knowing how important each down is down there. Uh, is big for us, and the guys believe in it and, and want to get in the end zone. Garrett's getting hit frequently early. How much can pass game op open things up, back things off for him and make it a little easier? Yeah, that'd be huge. You know, we want to get Derek clean through the line. He's such a big, physical, tough runner that uh, if you get him through the line, he's tough to bring down by one guy. So uh, if we can get him through the line with uh, – with our blocking schemes and, and keeping the defense off balance with different looks we're showing on play action game, all those types of things, it's definitely going to help you know Derek have more explosive runs. I don't think we realized until after the game on Sunday that you had lost your father-in-law last week. How tough was it to deal with that and to, to focus on football, try to keep the focus on football, and maybe how much of a supporter was he of you and in, in your family career? He was huge. You know, um, Just a great man all the way around, through and through. Uh, just loved, loved so well, loved everybody, was joyful, uh, enjoyed the simple things in life. Um, just a great man to be around. And uh, so it was definitely a tough loss. You know, shockingly came on uh, on Wednesday morning after walkthrough, I found out. Uh, and it was tough. It was tough all week. You know, yesterday I had the funeral, you know, back in Texas. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a tough week for, for my family and myself. So really just trying to, to lock in when I'm in the building and on the practice field on, on the task at hand and, uh, you know, 
completely focus on, on what I have to do. But, yeah, it's a tough week. I have heavy hearts and um, a lot of sadness. You've played with a lot of different types of running backs in your career. What is it that, that Derek does well, and what do you like about playing with him? He's so, I mean, he's so unique physically uh, from a running back. You know, you've only seen a few guys like him in, in history. You know, you think of, uh, you know, Brandon Jacobs back in the day with, with the Giants. And I'm sure there's other guys before him, but, um, you know, just not too many times you see a running back with, with his sheer size. And then he has also great vision and strength, you know, through that. So um, he's a tough guy to bring down. Like I said, if we can just get him through the line of scrimmage and with some with some steam on him and uh, and into that second level, he's a tough guy to bring down. And, and you'll see, our I think, our running game, you know, take off a little bit more. Brian, I know the, the hope is to get Delaney back this week, but how much has Johnny Smith stepped up for you guys for the offense the last couple of weeks? Johnny has been huge. You know, I think I think I've talked about it a few times. He's grown, you know, since I've been here. I've, I've been excited about his talents since I've been here, but I've seen him take big steps uh, since he came back from the injury, you know, late in camp. And, uh, and I think his confidence just continues to grow uh, coming off that injury. You know, he's, he's getting more and more comfortable, I think, and uh, in the scheme and, and what we're doing. And he's making plays. You know, he had a heck of a catch on that touchdown. It was a terrible throw. You know, back hip, back hip him and. Caught it with his hands and spun and got in the end zone, you know. And he's he's making plays down the field. You, you see him in the open field. You know, the first guy really never brings him down. He's breaking tackles. I think on that screen, he probably broke three or four tackles. Um, just a, a dangerous weapon for us. Are there still times where routes can develop more quickly, and that the offense is, is, is still a work in progress on stuff like that? What do you mean by that? Corey and AJ sometimes, and, and Vrabel said, you know, sometimes you're making a yes or no decision very quickly on, on somebody else. But it seemed like uh, some of the stuff in the red zone, their stuff is a little slow developing. If if you wanted to look to them, they're not necessarily ready as early as maybe they could be. Yeah, I think it kind of depends by by play and play design. You know, where they're at in the read. Uh, are they on the first level, second level, you know, things like that. So every play is a little bit different. But, yeah, I mean, it's always a race between the front and the receivers. You know, who can get fronts racing to the quarterback, the receivers are trying to get open and, uh, and get the football before they get there. So uh, that's something we're constantly working at is, is getting open quickly and, and getting on the football. Brian, what have you seen from the offensive line in terms of trying to respond to early season tr- struggles and improve moving forward here? Yeah, they're definitely fighting through and growing, man. They uh, dealt with some injuries, guys bouncing in and out of the game, and, and other guys popping in, and uh, they really just have been steady. You know, there hasn't been a, a huge fall off anytime someone's gone out. So really proud of the ways the way those guys have fought through, and uh, and they just keep getting better. You know, we just like every position group, myself included. We just have to clean up on some little things, and and you know, we'll be in good shape. When you came into the league or when you were in college, did you ever watch film of, of other NFL quarterbacks to try to take things from their game to put in your own? Yeah, I do it every offseason. You know, go go watch other quarterbacks, other um, offenses around the league and, and just kind of see, you know, what's going on and, and what guys did to, to play well. Um, tough to do during season just because so much effort goes into preparation for the opponent you're playing. But, um, yeah, it's something I've, I've done my whole career is go watch guys that are playing at a high level and uh, and just try to, obviously, you have to be yourself, right? You have to uh, stay true to yourself, but there are little things that you can pick up from guys and, and things they do well that you can, you know, work on and, and practice and emulate in your game. Who's the guy you like to watch? All the guys that, that play well, you know, kind of differs from year to year who I watch. It's not one guy that uh, that I've studied. You know, I've studied Brady, Breeze, all the all the greats that, that are playing right now. Um, Went back and watched Mahomes this year. Uh, just an incredible year he had last year. And uh, so I kind of wanted to see, you know, what, what he was doing. And, um, you know, it's fun. It's fun to see what those guys are doing, and especially when they're making plays and playing well. Brian, what, uh, besides Keekley, what stands out about Carolina's defense? They're solid. They're solid all the way around. You know, you see their front, I think, um, really good front uh, all the way around. They have a few different packages that they'll throw at you and, uh, and try to, you know, keep you honest one way or the other. But uh, talented up front, big, strong, physical. Uh, they do a good job of, of uh, getting to the quarterback, I think. They, they push the pocket and make it tough to, to sit back there in one spot. You know, they're going to make you move and, and, uh, and get the ball out. So I uh, definitely have a ton of respect for that. And, and on the back end, they do a good job of, of uh, you know, keeping things in the front. It's not like they're, they're giving up a ton of huge plays down the field. Um, they try to 
you know, keep things in zone coverage primarily and, and um, keep things in front of them. So a um, ton of respect for, for what they're doing right now. Uh, it's fine. It's a little sore, but I'll be all right. For a couple of touchdowns in back to back week, what we like about him, and and can you speak maybe about your chemistry with him? Maybe when you were working as a backup, maybe you got additional reps with him that you maybe didn't get with some other guys. Uh, I wouldn't say I got any more reps with Tajay compared to the other guys, but uh, you know I have a ton of confidence in Tajay. I've seen him work. You know, going back to spring, he's he's long, he's lengthy, uh, he's, he has the ability to to make tough catches on the outside. You know, you see him tapping his feet. You know, throughout the whole year, uh, making tough catches on the sideline. Um, so he's definitely a, a weapon for us, and I think you know the more reps I get with him, the the more comfortable I get, and I know I have a, a ton of confidence already. So you know, excited on on the way that thing's going.